when it comes to people who are exhibiting violent behavior? Not only has it been completely blown out of proportion. That over a third of individuals convicted of violent felonies. Under any administration would become an ally. It needs to go. We need to abolish. Uh, at two others, I'm not sure whether they were misdemeanors or felonies under Texas law. Okay. Which changes now we have an administration that is desperate to erode our Second Amendment rights. House just announced national ban on firearm training. Paramilitary bill sparks concern. In the turbulent landscape of legislative proposals, there's one bill that's setting off alarm bells across the nation. The Preventing Private Paramilitary Activity Act of 2024. This isn't your run-of-the-mill proposal. It's a thunderclap that's shaking the very foundation of our constitutional rights. Picture this. Congress introduces a bill with a seemingly noble aim of preventing private citizens from engaging in paramilitary activities. Sounds straightforward, right? But the devil, as they say, is in the details. What seems like a well-intentioned effort quickly unravels into a web of concerns and constitutional quandaries. Let's break it down. The bill, championed by Senator Edward Markey, aims to restrict private citizens like you and me from organizing and training with firearms. It's a direct attack on our cherished Second Amendment rights. But it's not just about guns. It's about the fundamental freedom to gather and prepare for our own defense. The language of the bill is as broad as it is ominous. It criminalizes not just overt paramilitary groups, but any gathering of three or more individuals engaged in firearm training. That's right, your weekend shooting excursions with friends could suddenly land you on the wrong side of the law. What's particularly troubling is the ambiguity surrounding the bill's enforcement. It's not just the long arm of the law you have to worry about. Private citizens are empowered to take legal action against perceived violators. Imagine Karen from down the street suing your local shooting club out of existence. Not only has it been completely blown out of proportion. That over a third of individuals convicted of violent felonies. And every conservative in this Congress to stand with Representative Clyde and his legislation and to stand with me. There's a hearing that you can't be at, your counsel can't be present, you haven't been charged with the crime. Because she doesn't like the sound of gunfire on Sunday mornings. And the penalties? They're nothing short of draconian. Confiscation of firearms, imprisonment, civil suits. The bill throws the book at anyone daring to exercise their constitutional rights. Training with firearms could become a one-way ticket to a prison cell. But wait. It gets worse. The bill's reach extends far beyond state lines. Merely using firearms or ammunition that has crossed state borders could land you in hot water. It's a chilling reminder that Big Brother is watching, even when you're just honing your marksmanship skill at the local range. Proponents of the bill claim it's targeted at nefarious paramilitary groups, but the reality is far more sinister. It's a blatant violation of our Second Amendment rights, plain and simple. Our forefathers fought and died for the freedoms enshrined in the Constitution, and we're not about to let them slip away without a fight. As the specter of government overreach looms even larger, it's up to us, the ordinary citizens, to stand up and say, enough is enough. We won't be bullied into surrendering our rights, not now, not ever. So spread the word, raise the alarm, and let your voice be heard. The future of our freedoms hangs in the balance, and it's time to take a stand. Broad language raises alarms. The corridors of power in Washington, D.C. are buzzing with talk of a new bill that's sending shockwaves through the halls of Congress. The Preventing Private Paramilitary Activity Act of 2024. But what's got everyone on edge isn't just the bill itself. It's the dangerously broad language that's got civil liberties, advocates, and gun enthusiasts alike sounding the alarm. At first glance, the bill appears innocuous enough. 
a measure aimed at curbing paramilitary groups and their potentially nefarious activities. But dig a little deeper and you'll find a minefield of legal ambiguity and constitutional concerns. The crux of the issue lies in the bill's sweeping definition of what constitutes paramilitary activity. It's not just about organized militias or armed insurgents. It's about any group of three or more individuals engaging in firearm training. That means your friendly neighborhood shooting club could suddenly find itself in the crosshairs of federal scrutiny. But it's not just gun owners who should be worried. The bill's language is so broad that it could ensnare any group engaged in physical training or preparedness exercises. From martial art dojos to wilderness survival camps, no corner of the country is safe from the long arm of the law. And then there's the matter of enforcement. Under the bill's provision, not only can federal authorities crack down on alleged violators, but private citizens are also empowered to take legal action. Imagine your disgruntled neighbor filing a lawsuit against your local gun range because the sound of gunfire disrupts their afternoon tea. But perhaps the most alarming aspect of the bill is its potential to infringe upon our Second Amendment rights. The right to bear arms isn't just about hunting or self-defense. We're either out on probation, parole, or pretrial release at the time of those offenses. My speech is well beyond the two minutes that I'm allotted, so I'm just going to dispense with the notes, really. Under any administration would become an ally. It needs to go. We need to abolish. It's about the fundamental freedom to train and prepare for the defense of ourselves and our communities. By criminalizing firearm training, the bill strikes at the very heart of what it means to be an American. As the debate rages on in the hollow chambers of Congress, one thing is clear. The stakes can be higher. Our constitutional rights hang in the balance, and the outcome of this legislative battle will shape the future of our nation for generations to come. So let your voice be heard. Contact your representatives, rally your fellow citizens, and make it clear that you won't stand idly by while our freedoms are eroded. The time to act is now, before it's too late. Implications for Second Amendment The Second Amendment has long been a cornerstone of American identity, enshrining the right of citizens to keep and bear arms. But with the introduction of the Preventing Private Paramilitary Activity Act of 2024, the very essence of this constitutional guarantee is under threat. At its core, the Second Amendment is about more than just individual gun ownership. It's about the collective right of the people to defend themselves against tyranny and oppression. Furthermore, the bill's broad language leaves the door open for government overreach and exploitation of power. What constitutes paramilitary activity? Who gets to decide? These are questions that go to the very heart of our democratic principles and the rule of law. But perhaps most concerning of all is the erosion of individual freedoms that the bill represents. The right to bear arms isn't just a privilege granted by the government. It's a fundamental human right, inherent to our very existence. By curtailing this right, the government undermines the very fabric of our society and sets a dangerous precedent for future encroachments on our liberties. As the debate over the bill unfolds, it's imperative that we, as citizens, remain vigilant in defense of our constitutional rights. We must hold our elected representatives accountable and demand that they uphold their oath to protect and defend the Constitution. The Second Amendment isn't just a relic of the past. Contrast that with what Republicans did to address gun violence and crime the last time they were in charge. Yes. At two others, I'm not sure whether they were misdemeanors or felonies under Texas law. Okay. The impulsive leaders at ATF have once again failed to apply simple logic and reason to their decision making. It's a living, breathing testament to the enduring principles of freedom and democracy upon which our nation was founded. And we must fight tooth and nail to preserve it for future generations. Enforcement mechanisms and penalties. When it comes to legislation, the devil is often in the details, and the Preventing Private Paramilitary Activity Act of 2024 is no exception. 
beyond its broad language and potential implications for constitutional rights, what truly sets this bill apart are its enforcement mechanisms and penalties, elements that have civil liberties advocates and legal experts alike sounding the alarm. First and foremost, let's talk about enforcement. Under the provisions of the bill, not only can federal authorities crack down on alleged violators, but private citizens are also empowered to take legal action. This means that your nosy neighbor or an anti-gun activist can potentially file a civil lawsuit against you or your local gun club, alleging violations of the bill's provisions. Confiscation of firearms could leave law-abiding citizens defenseless against potential threats to their safety and security. Imprisonment could tear families apart and ruin lives over what amounts to little more than exercising their constitutional rights. And the financial burden of fines and legal fees could bankrupt individuals and organizations caught in the crosshairs of the bill's enforcement mechanisms. But perhaps most troubling of all is the potential for exploitation. Who gets to decide what constitutes paramilitary activity? What safeguards are in place to prevent government overreach and exploitation of power? These are questions that the man answers. Which changes now we have an administration that is desperate to erode our Second Amendment rights when it comes to people who are exhibiting violent behavior. And believe me, this rule has nothing to do with gun safety. This has nothing to do with making communities safer. And now the ATF, under the guidance of this administration, is coming to take away. Yet the bill provides scant reassurance. As the debate over the bill continues to unfold, it's imperative that we, as citizens, remain vigilant in defense of our constitutional rights. We must hold our elected representatives accountable and demand transparency and accountability in the enforcement of this and any other legislation that threatens our freedoms. The stakes couldn't be higher, and the time to act is now, before it's too late. That's all for this video, folks. See you next time.